Hey, what's good everybody? Today we have a waifu guitar type beat. Um, I made this beat a few days ago and sent it over to my Discord server asking people what they what did they think about this beat. Um, and the reception, like the feedback was pretty positive. Everybody seemed to kind of like this beat, so I'm gonna be covering this. This is kind of not close at all to ambient, which is what I usually make, but I used to make these kind of beats a few long time ago so i think i can kind of explain properly how to make waifu guitar type of beats a few things i want to point out first one is thank you reach who is my june patreon thank you very much if you want to support this channel and have access to the fops of all my tutorials check the link down below it's patreon.com slash martin live um the second one all the drums i'm gonna be using are from my toolkit um it's a drum kit link down in the description it's a three gigabyte drum kit it has my pad collection it has like 108 a 100 claps it's literally everything you could need to get uh on producing and a bunch of sounds that may help you get more creative and should sound different so having said that the beat you're hearing right now it's the beat i'm gonna be covering right now I thought that maybe that was better rather than making just like a whole preview part of the video that, that lasted so long. Um, but still, you'll have a final product at the end of the video. So if you want to hear the beat with all my voice on top of it, go to the end of the video. Having said that, let's jump into the full studio. Here's my full studio. Um, oh, I don't know where to begin with, really. So I'm just going to go with the drums first because it's always the easiest part to do. Um, the drums are pretty simple, pretty, pretty simple. Um, I have 808k clap, hi-hats, and then I have snares that just, I, I kind of like change the sample at times to give some more bounce and make my beaches sound like variate at times, if that makes sense. So the first sound I made when I made my drums was my 808, which sounds like this. I'm gonna explain this in a minute. So basically, um, I'm using the 80821 for my drum kit, and what I did is I wanted to have a very subby 808. So I went into an EQ and I drew in this EQ, which takes uh, everything that's up from 87 hertz. It, it basically removes all of those frequencies, so you only have the sub bass frequencies. Then what I did uh, was I came right in here and I right click cut itself, which basically when an, another note plays, um, the note that was playing before is cropped. It doesn't sound anymore. So basically uh, what you achieve with that is this effect, you know? Your 808 doesn't overlap. That's something that you should always do with your 808s. Always um, turn cut itself on. Then what I did right here was adding a node that has a velocity worth zero, because what I can do with that is that basically when this node, which is a node that for the piano roll is there, but it's not playing really, um, it will crop my 808. There's a few ways of doing that. You can also come in here and play with the ADSR and stuff, but that's just more messy and more steps. So this is easier and faster to do. I have a kick that plays at the same time my 808 does. pretty distorted so what I did in here I came into my kick and I added this plugin called 3D Peak Controller which is a plugin native on Apple Studio 20 um, I came in here to my 808 and I right click on the volume fader I came in here to link to controller and I added peak control peak um, and on the mapping formula I added inverted so basically what this does is it links my it links the envelope of the volume it links this little fader to the peak controller on the kick so basically i can give the kick certain properties which are these and what it will do is that every time the kick sounds it will make the volume of the 808 go up or down and you see this little thing happening right there so for that, you basically um, have to change the bass volume. And then what you do, the bass volume is um, how up or down you want the envelope to be default. 
And then this is just how the volume will play. You can make the volume go up when the kick sounds or down. And then tension and decay are just controls on how uh, steep the going up or down is and stuff. We have a clap right here, just regular clap. I use this clap on all my beats pretty much. Um, we have a hi-hat. Um, I didn't add my hi-hat preset because Waifu always keeps his his, his beats, his hi-hats pretty dry. So I wanted to keep my hi-hats dry too. Um, I play with the velocity as I always do, as you can see here. And something I added, which is a little bit more personal, is panning on these, um, how can you call them, rolls right here. If you want to have access to that, you come into the piano roll. You press in here where it says control velocity and you change it to pen. And then what I did was um, I came here, I tweaked a little bit down the um, the high EQ, like the high shelf, I think it's called, on the EQ, basically to make my EQ uh, more drowned, if that makes sense. Also, you can see that every time a clap plays, which would be here, would be here, would be here, and would be um, here as well. Um, the hi-hat that would usually go there is deleted. And that's because um, I hear that on not only Waifu's beats, but also on Lucy's beats, a producer from Rip Squad. Um, they do not play claps when the hi-hat plays. Like they remove the hi-hat where the clap plays and that makes your uh, clap like um, be more shiny, not, not shiny, that's not the right word. It makes your clap um, sound more present, look. Just a, a matter of preference. You don't have to do that, but I did. Uh, and then we just have rolls, which are all made on a third step. I don't think there's really a point in showing them all. It's a third step. I play with the velocity on them to make them sound more cool. But altogether, it sounds like this. I think Waifu uses this same exact sample. And that's basically it for the drums. Then let's move into the melody, which is why I think most of you guys are here. So I begin with this guitar. Um, it's Ample Guitar SH. It's the Semi Holo BST by Ample Guitar. Remember this, because I think, if I'm not wrong, this is the same exact guitar Waifu uses. It sounds very similar. If it's not the same, I think it's around there. Um, the MIDI was made by 406 Ahmad, which is an awesome producer. Go check him out right now. I'm going to be leaving his Instagram right now on the screen. So follow him. Tap in. Um, I think I tweaked, the little, I, I tweaked it a little bit, changed the chords or something, and then I just left that playing. So without uh, any effects, the guitar would sound like this. It's a very basic melody, you could say, very not, not basic, repetitive, but um, you want to have a foundation that's very strong for these kind of beats, you know? It's like a house. Uh, if you want to build a house, you have to have a stable foundation. And that's something I, I kind of patternize, or something that I kind of find on every waifu beat. It's like you have a structure and then it's like it builds, you know? And you need to have every part of your melody very stable and very determined to make it sound good. So this is my guitar, it sounds like this. No effects on it, dry. You may be wondering, why did you export your guitars? It's because I work on a very weird sample right on my on my interface, which is like, it has like 50 milliseconds of latency and it affects my guitars. They sound out of time. So I just export them and trim them. But yeah, this is how it would sound. I already showed that. Then I moved on to making a counter melody, which is, uh, that track 14 you can see over there, it's this one. I just wanted to have like a cute melody. 
uh, to like make company to the main guitar. And I wanted also that sounded stringy as well. So I went with Empo Guitar M or Empo Guitar Martin. And I used the preset Blues AG. And yeah, it's just a cool nylon guitar I like. Um, then we can find that I moved on to making this uh, guitar you hear here. Um, it's this guitar right here. I don't know where I have it, really. Um, it should be this one. It's this one. And then it repeats itself. This was originally going to be a lead, and then I changed it for um, a distorted guitar. The preset I am using is from Empo Guitar BC, and this is the Vintage Cherry. Vintage, vintage, yeah, vintage cherry. Sorry, uh, guitar plugin. It's the Highway 51 um, press preset, um, and I exported that. And once I had the export, which is this one, sorry, I came in here and I added the capitator. You can stop and copy the preset. Uh, pancake, like this, um, and then I I made this EQ right there. So, we're left now with this Rhodes, which you can hear. It's launched Lizard, the first, um, the first preset. I always use these Rhodes, it sounds amazing. Um, I didn't add any effects, it's just the regular uh, Rhodes presets. Um, what I did is I had my 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 main melody from the guitar. I took the, the top notes um, away and then I did Alt S on this very like intense preset and then I just strummed my melody like this. And once I had it strummed it, I quantized it and I added random notes where I felt like it sounded good. So now that I had everything, you know, now that I had my, my, my main melodic components, components, sorry. I'm having really bad uh, misspells today. Um, which were these four. I needed something to give my melody more body, you know. Because it sounds good, but you cannot just make a beat out of this, you know. So, what I did is I... First came to contact um, like this, and this is my um, modern Elia Efimov modern bass. Um, it's um, a bank by Elia Efimov called Modern Bass, which sounds pretty good in my opinion. It's the only bass I use, um, and yeah, it basically sounds like this. Plain bass plays throughout the whole beat. The only thing I did to this bass is EQ um, the lows out because, you know, the bass, something that it has is very, it has, it's not like an 808, you know, it has a lot of bassy frequencies, but it also adds to the melody. It adds some more like bass, but it also adds some mid frequencies, which sound really nice. So I wanted that to have the bass playing throughout almost the whole beat. And when the when the 808 came in, I EQ'd the bass out. So I just have um, the bass playing. I can keep having the bass playing without any problems. So this is what I did, literally. Only throughout the, the, the main introduction, the you can hear the bass. And then right here, I'm going to show you right now. Um, this is what happens, look. You know, uh, throughout the main... Uh, main introduction, you can hear the sub bass frequencies and then they go away. So it leaves room for the 808. So once that we have already covered that, I went into one of my favorite BSTs to be honest, which is Labs. Labs is a free BSD by Spitfire Audio, which has like 20 gigs worth of banks, which are really nice. And they have literally everything you could need. So I first came into Labs and made this piano. Oh, this was not a piano. Surprisingly enough, I first made then this music box resonator. Um, it's from the bank. Yeah, music box, and it's a resonator music box. It sounds like this. And then it plays itself. 
this part of melody making is more about adding layers to your melody so it sounds more full and more orchestral also because waifu always has this very orchestral sound in my opinion which i wanted to recreate and that's why i added so many um orchestral elements as you'll see now so i had that but i wanted something else so i went into laughs and i added this staccato string it's called strings short but the term is staccato um and yeah it basically sounds like this and it's like one of the it's the most predominant counter melody you know and here it's the same melody you have at the start but one octave up I didn't want the, the whole, like the same melody be playing over and over again, so I added some variation here by turning it one octave up. And then we had, I think now this is a piano. Yes, it is a piano. So it's this piano that sounds like this. I didn't want to have a main piano. I just wanted to have like something adding like a cool, cute piano texture. So I went with laughs and then I went into my mixer and I added Fa Filter Timeless 3. I took the bass frequencies out and I made this delay preset. You can start the video and copy that. And then we have strings. I'm using two different strings for this. Um, the first one is, let me check, is strings violin from Frozen Strings. And then I have real strings from the actual strings bank. I'm using strings long, and if you go to Frozen Orchestra, which I don't know where it is really, here, it's the violin preset. The fake strings, you could call them, sound like this. Sounds kind of emotional, to be honest. And then we have um, the real strings playing. We have uh, Celeste. It's it's a mallet. It's called Celeste Soft. It's you go into mallets and it's the preset number two. Sounds like this. sorry about that um well basically what this does is as i said before i'm just adding textures and more uh melody layers so then you can take them on and off and you know something that you need to do is you cannot have the listener get bored you know uh you basically throw out the beat you need to be ear candying the, the listener so you if you have many layers like i have here you can turn them on and off and switch them and the listener won't really tell what just went away but they will tell oh something's different I don't know what it is, but it sounds good. So you can just give some variation to, to your beat. And then I have this last preset, which is the piano. It's the main melody. I'm using the soft piano preset. I went in here, added the filter pro R. This is the preset again. Stop if you want to copy it. And I added timeless three, which looks like this. Um, and I just made my piano sound like I'm recording it from a speaker, you know, if that makes sense. I wanted to have that exact same sound, so that's what I did. And that's literally it for the beat. Then I added some little um, risers and stuff and my tag and precautions and effects. But that is pretty much it. Um, I'm going to keep the beat playing now for the outro. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, feel free to leave down a comment, subscribe. I'm going to be posting more because in a week, my two-week uh, winter break starts. So I'm going to be posting a lot, I hope. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like, subscribe, dislike if you dislike the video. Um, and yeah, my drum code will be linked down below, my Patreon as well. So yeah, i see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Goon City Enterprises, the future today.